Hello everybody and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast, the podcast where you learn about life, business and have a bit of fun all while doing it. Today we're talking about critical thinking and how to use it. It's an important skill, it's one that we always get told about but we're not often told about, you know, like what are some of the benefits, what's a sign you're low in critical thinking. So enjoy this podcast, it's really fun, we have John back so that's always nice and as always, have a magical week. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. Very exciting that we've got an old friend back, a regular on the pod. It's good to see him again. First time for 2024. John, before we get into anything else, how are you going? Yeah, not too bad, Jez. Back at work officially as of yesterday. So, um, yeah, back into the the administrative fun and games that we have within government. Um, I know there are plenty of places I'd rather be, but life's like that. So, no, it's good. It's... um, 24 is shaping up to be a good year. Amazing. It was so good to have you back on. And we were just talking about this before the podcast, but I think listeners will be interested. What have you been up to? What have, what, what work have you just been working on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, loaded question. So the wife has a property styling business and um, she's short-staffed on the truck. So I've been shifting furniture for the last two weeks, um, everything from queen beds down to you know, coffee tables and lounges, tables, name it. And some of the houses are, are really good, like they're single story, no problems. But as I just said before, what you know, one of them was a four story townhouse. So that's a lot of stairs to get up to the master bedroom. We did one uh, yesterday, yesterday and it was only three stories, but the builders haven't like they don't care about the furniture. They they're just trying to squish things in, and some of the stairways are just ridiculously sharp. So it's just horrid. Well, great All job. Fun. I'm glad you've survived the four stories of moving things up and down. If I mean, I guess if um if the admin gets too much for you, you can start your own business. I just thought of it. It can be called Sofa So Good. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, nice. it's great to have you back on john great oh, yeah. and we can't wait to chat to you uh today danette uh how are you going yeah um it's been a weird week this week um got to catch up with jez and, and kanika and Legree in melbourne um and then got news that my aunt is not well and so has gone into palliative care so turned around having driven down to melbourne and drove up picked up my mum and now we're in canberra so yeah, it's been a bittersweet week, but it was great to see you guys on Wednesday. Yeah, that is true. We're lucky that we got to have a little opportunity to catch up. And also, I realized I haven't been spruiking this this year as much, but I think that we should just talk about this quickly because, Danette, you also have a book that people can come pick, pick up called The Adaptable Leader. Uh, we have You have your own podcast about that and you, people can listen to some. It was on this feed as well. But uh, people should definitely check this out, The Adaptable Leader. It's a great book. I got some great tips and there's a lot of great reviews coming in for it. So that's amazing. We the, the link to grab that is in the description. And I think something that's important when you want to be an adaptable leader is critical thinking skills. There we go. That's the segue for today. Um, so so um, today, Kanika actually suggested uh, this as a topic, critical thinking, because it's something that's kind of quite important to business and growth and everything like that. But we haven't actually done a podcast on it. So um, I think we can just probably jump straight into it. Hopefully people have looked at the title and gone, this is great. I want to work on some critical thinking. So I might start with you today, John. Why is critical thinking important? Look, I actually think thinking actually is really important and we don't do enough of it. So let's go back to the basics. Um, rather than just doing what you're told and and um, follow with a bouncing ball, actually think about what you're doing. It's easy when we're on systems and computer systems where you just type and some you know the words um, spell check will come up and says the word's wrong. Well, is it really or is it the context? And you know, so but critical thinking allows you to make informed decisions. You know, you, you're looking at what's in front of you or what you've got to do, and you're you're giving it due consideration as opposed to just going along on pilot mode. Um, I also think that it it actually helps with your resilience, so that if you can be critically thinking about things that you've done or haven't done, and why did you do it that way, and rather than something else, um, 
that when problems come up and you've got that critical thinking skill, you can actually work through those problems um, and look at your options and explore your options um, as opposed to just letting everything hit you. So, yeah, to me, it's important because of the resilience factor. Yeah, great insight. And I think that that concept of autopilot, I saw online that someone said the opposite of critical thinking is autonomous thinking. And that's just essentially what you're talking about, being in that autopilot mode, not really thinking. So uh, great insight there. Uh, Danette, I'll go to you. What is, why is critical thinking important? I totally agree with everything that John said. Um, I think, too, the more you learn to use critical thinking as a skill, you get to see the bigger picture. You get to make way more informed decisions. Um, and so, yeah, to John's bit about being more resilient, um, it also makes you more adaptable because you're actually able to think of the big picture and go, okay, what do I need to research? What insights do I need to make a good informed decision as opposed to whether it's that automatic, oh, I'll just go with whatever's in front of me or accepting information from people which might just be an opinion and it may not even be an informed opinion and then living your life that way. So I think, you know, when we make decisions, whether it's personal or work, we're not only impacting ourselves, we're often impacting others. And so I think that skill of developing that actually helps us create better workplaces too because people can talk to you about the decision and you would gather information from people you would research and stuff like that. Um, and I always think of when ChatGPT came out first, there was a whole thing about, you know, this is a great tool, which it is, um, but some of the research that it quoted was made up. And so that's, you know, great, use the tools, use AI, et cetera, and then make sure that actually if it says this is where it's come from, go back and check the, the research to make sure it's actually true. So I think... We, we like to make quick decisions. The thing is often those quick decisions, um, because we do a lot in the bias area, our brain wants to make quick decisions and how it does it is it runs biases, which means they're not informed decisions. So I think critical thinking actually helps us make way better decisions. So um, yeah, that's my two bits more. Yeah, that's no, that's really good. It's um, I was actually I, I don't know why this has reminded me of this, but it has reminded me a little bit of just this autopilot thing we're talking about. And if you're not making, if you're not critically thinking, you're not kind of giving yourself any sort of difference than what you're just being handed. You're just kind of letting it all go through. I was actually listening to a podcast this week that had Tony Robbins on it. It was hosted by a comedian called Theo Vaughn, which I highly recommend. It's an interesting blend of comedy and um, Tony Robbins. But he was saying, you know, like that all humans need uh, like six different things. And one of them was uh, comfort. And one of the other ones was variety, you know? And I think that if you're just doing, if you're not critically thinking, you may just be leaving yourself in the comfort zone and it's not allowing you to get that other part that your sort of soul almost needs, which is that sort of variety. Um, and I'm also thinking too, because this is going to lead into our second question here, which is what are signs that someone is lacking critical thinking skills. But I think also sometimes I've worked for people, managers at cafes, what have you, that find it quite frustrating when people want to do things their own way. But I think, I wonder how much that's got to do with they themselves didn't have a lot of critical thinking skills when they were going through, they've made it to manager. So they've, they've seen how that path can go without critical thinking. And so they may find it frustrating if other people are trying to bring in their own critical thinking ways that may actually help the business, but it's not the way they've always done it. Um, it can be sort of uh, almost annoying. Um, but anyway, I'll go to you, Danette. What are some signs that someone is lacking in critical thinking skills? Um, so exactly what you're saying there, they're not open to other people and their insights. Um, I, I first started as an auditor many, many years ago. And one of the things we always used to say is if you go into an area and you say, why are you doing it this way? And they go, because we've always done it that way that's a sure sign that they haven't thought about that process for a very long time, which means that it's probably out of date. It's not as effective, certainly not as efficient as it could be. Um, so I think when people are closed off, so they've got that fixed mindset, that's usually a pretty good indicator um, that they're not really critically thinking. And people with really strong opinions that 
often aren't fact-based. So they sound really certain, but they're, it's just an opinion. That's also a pretty good sign that they're not using critical thinking. Thanks, Jess. Nice. Great answers there, Danette. Um, John, I'll go to you. What are some signs that someone is lacking in critical thinking skills? The I, I guess I want to, before I answer that question, I want to go back to part of the conversation we are just having. You know, you are talking about, was it Theo Bond and Tony Robbins? And, and who are the people that we're getting this information from? Um, there are, out on social media, there are so many people that are experts in, you know, whatever it is that they're, they're doing. But are they really? Um, you know, and if you're relying on that information from them and, you know, they're very left field or it's just not, what information are you actually getting and are you giving it any thought or, or are you then just parroting it back? So I guess, you know, signs that people um, lack critical thinking, have they got their own confirmation biases? You know, Danette was talking about, you know, we, we deal in a lot of this stuff and we do. So what are your biases? Are you, are you actually looking at what it is that, that you believe and why do you believe that? And is it because TikTok said um, or Facebook said, then maybe you need to go to, I don't know, Encyclopedia Britannica and see if it's real. Um, so that would be part of it. So social media, I think, has got a lot to answer and a lot of people just take that as gospel and I don't believe it's true. So, you know, look broader than that. Do your research. <clears throat> um People that don't see the impact of what they do on other people and don't understand why they're reacting the way they are when they've just said something quite extreme or they've said something or done something and people are going, hang on, that doesn't work or that's that shouldn't be right. You know, are you giving thought about what you're doing? Are they jumping to conclusions? Are they overgeneralizing? So everyone does this. Oh, I don't know if everyone does. Or you never do that. And it's like, hang on, I did it once back in 1943 so you can't say that statement um so look at the words that you use as well um because words have a lot of power and if you're using those over generalized words like everyone does or nobody does then maybe you lack some of that critical thinking Mm, that's uh, some really good insights there, John. Uh, and I definitely did just parrot back that thing that I heard on that podcast between Tony Robbins and Theo Vaughn. So that was definitely true. Um, no critical thinking there, but uh, I, I did. Um, but in saying a... that though, Jez, sorry, mm. sorry to interrupt. I mean, Tony Robbins has quite a good strong name from mm. years of practice and years of what he's done. Now, whether you agree or not with him, that's up to you, but you know, I guess, not knowing who this CEO is, but Tony Robbins, you sort of go, okay, he's got something behind him. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the uh, you know, I've had an interesting run-in, actually, speaking of the TikTok world and all this, I've had a sort of interesting run-in with, uh, with, I don't know how much this has engaged my critical thinking, but I'm getting a lot less of the same stuff now. I'm getting stuff from all over the place, all over the political spectrum. I don't know why. But it has definitely changed my opinion on what everybody believes and where different parts of Australia are at in different ways. You know, um, I don't know why, but I'm getting a lot of things that I disagree with, but it's showing up on yep. my feed. But what it is introducing me to is that um, I guess it's, it's you know, we all live in some sort of a bubble. It's just making it more obvious to me what are the limits of this bubble that I'm within and what other people, where other people are at, you know. It's not a positive or negative thing. It's just that I'm having a broader understanding of, you know, not what I think is not what most people think, you know, and that's mm. okay. There's no right or wrong answer or anything. It's just, you know, it's different. Uh, and it's, helping, it's definitely helping me feel like I'm getting better critical thinking because I'm starting to see much more perspectives and things like that. So, um, but John, you know, people might've been listening to this and I go, they might be resonating with this going, I think, you know, I feel like maybe I am in a bubble. Maybe I'm, my, my critical thinking skills are lacking. How can people get better at critical thinking? So a couple of tips I'll throw out there is ask questions. You know, if, you, if you're asking questions and particularly about your own biases, why do I think that, then you're going to explore, explore different avenues and expand your horizons. Um, look at the research of where you're looking at things. So are they the, the TikToks of the world, the TikTok experts who say that, you know, to lose weight, you have to eat clay glue 
you know, three times a day and everyone goes, oh, well, let's go do that. And you go, oh, maybe that's not healthy. Clag glue is an old thing from back in the 80s at school, kids, Perkins Pace. And anyway, um, so where's your research going on? Um, where's it coming from? And what what sits behind the person giving that research? So, you know, the likes of Tony Robbins, who has been in the industry for, I don't know, 30, 40 years and who has a very good reputation um, and through a lot of practice, you sort of should put a bit more into that. Um, and just don't rely on social media. There's so many more facts out there. And, yeah, you know, whether it's chat GTP or, or whatever, um, actually do some research. Yeah, it's a good point. And it's it can be hard because you can just feel like it's you're getting all this information from one thing. You know, if you're on social media, you're getting something from ABC News, you're getting something from something else. But so like if I'm feeling informed, but then also you can take a step back and go, oh, what am I even really learning about? That's what I'm also finding this year. Like, mm. what am I trying to put into my brain? It doesn't like I should probably be better discerning of what this stuff is. Yeah. And, and if you're getting feeds that challenge that, you know, your own thinking, is your thinking correct or, you know, have a look at that. Don't be afraid to go, actually, maybe I need to tweak my ideas. Yeah, 100%. Well, thanks for that, John. Um, Danette, how can people get better at critical thinking? I, I really like John's answer. And I, I love the question, what if I'm wrong? To really broaden up your thinking around critical thinking. So rather than just going, well, this is my belief, therefore it must be wrong. What if I'm wrong? Um, I think to just being open-minded. So, you know, I love that you're getting different feeds and some you don't agree with because that's how we keep our mind open. Um, the other thing I think that's really important, and we talk about it quite a bit on you know, a lot of the courses we do, is what they call active listening, which is listening to understand. So actually once someone says something you don't necessarily agree with or you don't know about, to actually sit and digest that and learn from that. And I think reflection which we talk about a lot is super important so you know today what did I learn um you know what stretched me in terms of my thinking what were my sources and I like what John John talked about you know not social media but looking at the actual sources um a couple of others is just learning to do research learning to think in scenarios so that you can plan different things because that, again, broadens your thinking. Um, and the other one is do a course in critical thinking. So if you're not sure, why not learn from an organisation? There's lots of online courses around critical thinking. The thing is when we don't do this, when we go back to question two where people weren't displaying critical thinking, um, some of those people think they're really smart, but there's lots of people looking at them going, you don't know what you're talking about. So the lovely thing about developing this skill is one, people will actually want to follow you if you're a leader because you've got someone who's making informed research decisions. And I think that's super important versus working with someone like you were talking about, you know, those managers that someone brought a new idea and they just shut it down straight away. So even the phrase, yes, and, as opposed to when people are closed-minded, and generally not using critical thinking, they use no but. So they shut the conversation. I really like yes and as a phrase because you can build on what you know and build with what other people know and their research too. Um, so they're my answers on that. I love this topic. It's a really good topic. Yeah, it's a good one. And shout out again to Kanika for, suggest for suggesting it. I um I wanted I've thought a little bit more about this emotional reaction as well that some people might have if their critical thinking is not good and I'm going to use myself as an example of this because I think this is something that I I've become more aware of is that I think that sometimes um when it comes to critical thinking emotions can be clues but they also can be quite untrustworthy as clues uh so for example sometimes like I don't know if if you two have ever had this but I sometimes meet people that on paper are pretty similar to me but as i'm talking to them i start getting a weird negative feeling whether it's anger i don't know why and it's nothing they're doing it's just something is happening in my biochemistry that's saying something's wrong here and i don't know what it is and i don't like it the more i've reflected on that it's typically people that i meet that um 
remind me of some of my worst qualities or things that I don't like about myself. So like, for example, I would often meet people who are interested in doing stand-up comedy, but haven't quite taken the plunge. And I would find that quite annoying, but I, I didn't know why. And the reason was because I was sort of feeling guilty about how little stand-up I was doing. And these people were reminding me of myself in that scenario, reminding me of the fear of doing stand-up. And so I it was created a sort of uh, negative uh, feeling within me. But using critical thinking, I can actually unpack that emotion a little bit more and be like, okay, why am I feeling bad about this? It, does, it doesn't make sense. It's because I'm feeling guilty in my own mind. And the other thing that um, just if the Tony Robbins thing, I've also re reminded myself in the podcast, um, the Theo is talking about why he doesn't, he, why he can't accept that he's successful as a person. He's quite successful. He's, he's you know, he's going to come to Australia shortly. He's an American comedian. He is on paper, very successful, but he's wondering why within himself, if he accepts that he's going to feel guilty. And the good thing about that conversation, it's a really interesting conversation, but the good thing about it is, Tony Robbins does the opposite of sitting and waiting to answer. He does extremely good active listening. So every time Theo's like, you know, he will say something like, oh, you know, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll just, and then he sort of stops talking and then Tony goes, you know, no, no, finish that thought. Let's see where that actually, that thought was going to take us. Cause if we look at that, that may actually give us clues. Um, so yeah, that's just some things for me. Um, so Danette, we'll stay with you here. Any final thoughts you have on today's conversation and critical thinking and how to use it? So I think in this world, it's a skill that we all should continue to develop. And um, yeah, a simple thing is check your sources, go back and actually find the research that says the thing that you're trying to prove, et cetera. Um, that's a really simple thing to do. Um, we've all got the internet or most of us got the internet. So um, yeah. And th the thing you were talking about, Jez, just before, that's um, called your shadow self. Um, so it's the bit that often triggers. I reckon that'd be a great topic for a podcast too. <laughs> great suggestion. Um, I love that. Um, John, any final thoughts on today's conversation and critical thinking? Yeah, Jess. Um, I love, love Danette's, you know, the why do I do or why do we do, you know, what we do? Um, because it opens up, you, you suddenly got to think of, okay, why do I do or why do I believe what I believe or why do I react the way that I do with some conversations? And that allows you to bring in that critical thinking and reflect, as Danette was saying, reflect on what it is that's annoying you or what it is you're doing and what, you know, what are you getting out of it? Um, and is it actually beneficial? I used to work in a gym and number of conversations I'd have with people who would come in and as part of their warm up, they'd jump on the treadmill and they would move it up to five and do that for 20 minutes. And it's like, okay, so why? Well, that's what I do to warm up. Yeah, but why? Um, well, that just warms me up for what I, yeah, okay, why? You know, and it's that, well, I don't know. I, that's an autopilot response. And if you haven't got an answer, I mean, choose something else, get on a bike, pump it up to seven, pump it up to a hundred. I don't give a rats, but pump it down to one um, or walk outside and come back in and start again. But why do we do what we do and keep asking that why? And then the other one I'd say is another good tip, I think, is find someone who's going to challenge us. Don't find people that are just thinking the way you're thinking. And we all have, we gravitate towards people who are aligned to our way of being or way, a way of thinking. Find someone who's different to that and then have that conversation but listen to what they're saying as well yeah and i think that's a great point and also i think even within that john it's like it doesn't have to be someone who you're totally an opposite from it can be someone no, no, that no. Yep. you share a passion with for example it might yep. be a sport or something but it's just politically different than you you still have somewhere to relate to one another but you can also like you know learn from this person in a different way yeah and yeah. it's all part of that just keep learning mm. Love it. Well, thank you both so much for a great podcast. This has been awesome. I definitely feel like my critical thinking is improving listening to this, and I hope all our listeners are as well. Uh, to everybody that's been sharing and uh, listening to the podcast, thank you so much. It's always nice to uh, have listeners that you know are responding. And speaking of responding, if you want to send us a message, jump on Spotify. There's a little question there. You can actually just fill that out, and we'll um, address it in a future podcast. But otherwise, everybody, thank you so much. And as always, everybody, have a magical week.